Hey everybody, Cole here with Classic Mini DIY, and on today's episode, we are going to begin the assembly of the original Cooper S engine. So, stay tuned for that. Now, as I said, on today's episode, we are gonna be diving into the assembly of this Cooper S engine. Now, on today's episode, we are gonna be focusing on the block. So that's the crankshaft, the camshaft, um, and really everything that we have the parts for on the engine block. Um, we are going to be tackling the gearbox in another episode. And then of course the cylinder heads will go on last because those will be coming back from Ireland. Um, my good friend over at HRE IRL, Paul Hickey, has been rebuilding those Cooper S uh, heads. And if you wanna see the progress on those, check out his channel. He is making in-depth videos about how this works and how to rebuild a cylinder head. Very, very cool stuff. That should be popping up in the corner if it hasn't already. Now in today's episode, we are going to be focusing on the engine block itself. So we're gonna get the crankshaft in, we're gonna get the pistons in, lifters, camshaft, cam bearings. We're gonna actually tackle that ourselves on this episode. And I'm gonna show you guys the kind of nuances with a Cooper S engine. Now for those of you who have been with the channel for a while, you'll know that I've built a few engines on video. And I've gone in depth on how to do pretty much everything that you need on the engines here in the Classic Mini. So as a result, this episode is going to be a little bit different. We're gonna be focusing on the actual process, really getting into it. Um, I'm gonna put on some good music. We're gonna talk about some of the weird little things on the Cooper S block that is different from a standard engine. But aside from that, this is gonna be a really chill episode and I hope you guys enjoy it. If you do and you like this kind of episode, let me know and I'll do more of them in the future. Now, before we get into all of the build, before we get into everything, I wanna take a moment to mention to you guys that we have a huge array of new hydraulic and oil feed lines available on the store now. That means that you can replace those old tired copper lines or the old braided lines you have on your car for your brakes, your clutch, and we have a brand new product. It is a turbo oil feed line. So for those of you who have been building a turbo A series and and kind of piecing together parts for that build, we now offer a wide range of turbo feed lines to suit the GT15 turbo, the GT17, and for those crazy people who have them on their engines, the GT20. And the best part about these is that every single one of the lines is available in a rear mount turbo configuration or a side mount turbo config. So, they're heat sleeved, they're ready to roll, and the perfect length for an A-series turbo engine, if that's something that you're building. If it is, go ahead and click the link in the description and check those out. It'll also bring you to the full brake line and clutch line kits that we now offer in a wide variety of colors. Very, very exciting stuff. And I'd recommend keeping an eye on the store as we're gonna be adding lots of new parts over the coming weeks and lots of very, very cool custom parts for the Classic Mini. With that out of the way, let's jump over to the bench over here and I wanna show you guys the things that we're gonna be putting in this engine because there are a few different things that are uncommon on this engine block when compared to later engines or even earlier engines that didn't have these as well. All right, so as far as parts go, most of these are pretty common looking, but there are a few little nuances I wanna mention before we get into this build. Now, of course, we are putting in brand new pistons. We're putting in all new hardware, but some of this hardware is very special. Now, first things first, I wanna mention these lifters. These are cold rolled steel, so they're extremely strong. 
but they also come with an oiling hole on the side. This is gonna help prevent wear over time, and it's gonna make sure that this face that actually makes contact with your camshaft is going to last a long time. All in all, it's to improve the reliability and longevity of the parts. Um, this is something that a lot of people put in their performance engines, but it's something that I would recommend putting in a standard engine as well. Um, and they're not that much more expensive than a standard set and you're gonna get a lot more life out of them. One thing I wanna mention is that all the parts you see here are linked in my description below. So if you wanna pick up any of these, I have some links to those and some of the ones that are more generic like these ARP bolts, I have some links to those that are available for purchase in the US. They're actually quite a bit cheaper here. Sorry, UK. Um, but you can order them directly from ARP or from like Summit Racing. Now, in addition to these uprated uh, lifters, I'm also putting in uprated push rods. These are what slot into your lifters here and move your rocker assembly up and down. These are a uprated steel, definitely something worth doing on a performance engine. And then, of course, all of the hardware is being replaced with ARP equivalent hardware. So these are for the connecting rods, which are these right here. These are special big end style Cooper S rods. They're made specifically for the Cooper S crank. Um, this right here, of course, is our cylinder head uh, stud kit. Um, that actually probably won't go on today. I just pulled it up there so you guys could see it. And then right here is something special. These are actually ARP main stud bolts. These are, well, studs actually. Um, these are for the main caps that hold the crankshaft in. So the Cooper S is really cool. It has studs instead of bolts. And I'm gonna go ahead and replace those with an ARP OEM equivalent. There are aftermarket kits from ARP that have like a stud kit or you can get them from MED, um, but these are specifically made for the Cooper S block. So that's why they look a little bit different. Um, as far as the camshaft goes, we are going to be putting in an Evo 001 cam in this engine. Um, it is going to be the kind of like best all around performer. Unfortunately, I really wanted to keep it as original as possible, but the original Cooper S uh, camshaft was not reusable. It was in rough shape, just wasn't usable. Now, one thing I have up on this table here that is unusual, I haven't done this before. Unfortunately, Charlotte has had a dramatic drop in machine shops that can uh, work on these cars. We went from having almost, uh, I guess, five or six different machine shops to literally only having one within a driving distance for me um, that was willing to take on a job like this. And since that is the first time they've done an A-series block, I'm gonna be double checking their clearances with a plastic gauge. Um, this is something that will not hurt, you know, it's something that is worth doing on um, any engine build, but the machine shops I used previously, I'd done work with for many years and I knew that they knew what they were doing, or at least that they had experience with it. So before this all gets buttoned up, we're gonna be doing plastic gauge checks on every one of the bearing faces. So that's the um, connecting rods, but as well as the main caps and the main bearings. So that should be a fun new experience. Now the last thing, and I'm very, very happy about, is that the crankshaft that we're gonna be putting in this engine didn't have to be ground down at all. It took a nice little polish, but they're all at the standard bearing thickness, and that is going to, of course, increase the longevity of this engine. These crankshafts are very, very rare and very special for a Cooper S engine. Um, we actually have two of them. Uh, Will brought two over and said, you know, let's use the one that's in better shape. So we'll clean these up, we'll clean off the oil that's been protecting them, and then we'll check the plastic gauge readings on these to make sure it's all good. Now, the last thing I wanna mention before we jump into this is that um, these pistons are specially made for a high compression engine. I've worked with Paul to make sure we measured the deck height, we measured the combustion chamber volume um, within the cylinder head, and we made sure to match it up to the pistons that we got here. These are the neural pistons. Um, they are a high comp version, a high compression version of those neural pistons. Um, and we will be targeting the factory compression ratio on this engine to make sure that it is a nice hot performer and it you know, behaves like it did when it rolled off the assembly line. Hopefully a little bit better.
suffering and unhappiness, and it's all over much too quickly. The question is, have I learned anything about life?
All right, so that is gonna wrap up today's episode and the assembly of the top end. Now, obviously there are still some things that we need to do on this, but for the most part, the top end of the engine is now put together. Now you might've caught that I didn't show installing the pistons themselves, and that is because I accidentally deleted the footage while I was changing out SD cards on my camera. So super frustrating, but if you guys are interested in how to do that, I have done that in a lot of other episodes. So don't worry, there is some footage if you're looking for an instructional on how to do that. Now we can't wrap up this video without saying an enormous, enormous, like I cannot express to you guys how thankful I am that I was able to work with HRE, um, that's Hickey Race Engineering, to machine these heads, to rebuild these heads, and to completely rebuild the rocker assemblies. You guys probably saw that those don't look like a standard set of rocker assemblies, and that's because they are not. They are built extremely well and are going to be running really, really well with this engine. He chambered out the head so that they'd meet the exact compression ratio that we're looking for for this engine. And I just, I have to say a huge thank you to Paul. If you guys are looking for expert work on cylinder heads and all sorts and all things mini, he is the person to check out. Um, I know that he has a pretty big backlog right now, but if you want something done and you want it done right, definitely reach out to Paul. Now, the only other thing that I want to mention before I wrap this up is the oil pump on these older blocks. Now, this block is obviously the AEG 312. This is a early Cooper S block, and they have a three bolt mounting system for the oil pump system. And it originally had something called a pin drive oil pump. Now, because we're upgrading the camshaft on this, it also meant that we needed to upgrade the oil pump. And we are moved to what's called a slot drive oil pump, and those don't directly mount to these old blocks. And unfortunately, these blocks, they don't make oil pumps except for one place down in Australia. Um, they don't make oil pumps that mount up to these anymore. So for this setup, we actually had to drill and tap an extra bolt hole for the two bolt uh, oil pumps to mount up properly. Um, this is a very common practice on these old engines and on these old engine blocks. So it's not something that's like, you know, scary. Um, but you do have to drill and tap that to quarter inch 28 thread and it is a little scary when you're doing it but definitely needed to do so that we could run this new oil pump now if you guys have any questions or have any input on this engine you know you have something that you're like hey cole you know it would be better if you did this or hey cole you know this is a little bit weird feel free to post that in the comment section below i'm really keen to hear what you guys have to say um, and on the next episode i'm hoping that we can get the rest of the gearbox mounted to the engine here um, and largely get the engine pretty much wrapped up and start checking for oil pressure on the bench. So, so thank you guys so much for tuning into this episode. And until I see you guys again, you know the drill. Enjoy those minis and motor on.